Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up Pi VPN. This is a VPN that is completely self-hosted and runs on the Raspberry Pi. In this video I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi 3 and make sure you have Ethernet and access to your router settings before starting. A self-hosted VPN is better than some subscription-based ones since the server is your local network. Additionally, you don't have to pay for anything since the entire process is free. First, we're going to start by flashing our Raspberry Pi. This will be installing the new OS that we're going to install the VPN on. Go to the raspberrypi.com and then here, install the imager. This will automate the process of flashing the SD card. To start, you would need a micro SD card, at least uh, two gigabytes. We're going to be using Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64 bit. Then select the SD card and then make sure you go to settings and then enable SSH. This will allow us to control it remotely from our computer. And also set a username and password to allow access remotely. Once it's set, go ahead and click save. If you'd like to use Wi-Fi, although it's not recommended since the speeds will be slower, you can set it up there. Once you're done, you can go ahead and hit right and then continue. Once it's done, go ahead and take the micro SD card and put it in the Raspberry Pi. You can go ahead and power on the Raspberry Pi and make sure it's connected to Ethernet. Now we're going to move on to installing OpenSSH. This will allow us to remotely access our Raspberry Pi from our Windows computer. First, start by going to settings and then going to optional features. If you already see OpenSSH here, you do not have to do this. You can skip to the next step. If not, click view features and then add the OpenSSH client. This is where, how we can use the SSH uh, commands. Then click next and then install the feature. After installing, make sure you restart so that all the command line features are enabled. In order to connect to the Raspberry Pi using OpenSSH, we need the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. We can go into our router settings and then find the Raspberry Pi. Here, you'll see the IP address. On the computer, type SSH, the username of the Raspberry Pi, at the IP address. This will likely start with 192.168.86, and then the last three will be separate. Then to continue connecting, type yes, and then the password you set whenever flashing the SD card. And then here, once you see a green line with your username, that means you're connected. Now we can run the commands to install the VPN. You can copy this command from the Pi VPN website. Once it's copied, just hit enter and everything is automated. Once it completes the initial setup, you'll see the Pi VPN automated setup installer. First, it'll ask for a static IP. Go ahead and hit OK, and then if you see a notice about IPv6, we can fix this later in the router settings. For now, just go ahead and hit Yes. For the DHCP reservation, go ahead and hit No and set up static IP. If you know how to set it up in the router, you can skip the step and hit Yes. For now, I'm going to hit No and then show you how to set it up later. Then click Yes to keep the same IP, and then if you get this notice, we can fix this later as well. Go ahead and select the default user and hit OK. Here you'll see the option between WireGuard or OpenVPN. OpenVPN has more features and has more legacy features for computers. However, if you're going to use uh, the VPN on mobile devices such as laptops and phones, I recommend using WireGuard. WireGuard is also easier to set up and connect to the phone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up WireGuard. Here you'll see the WireGuard port. This will need a port forward later in the router settings. I recommend just using the default one. Here for DNS provider, you can use the same one that your network uses or Google or Cloudflare. 
I'm going to go with cloud filler for this video. You can also use a custom one if you use an ad blocker such as Pihole. Here you'll find the option to use a public IP or the public DNS. A public DNS entry would be a custom domain, but the public IP is free. Then go ahead and hit OK and then the server keys will be generated. Once it's complete, it'll be prompted to enable auto updates. This is good for security updates. Once it's complete, Pi VPN and the Raspberry Pi will reboot. Go ahead and hit OK, and then once you reboot, we'll go to router settings. In the router settings, go to network settings and then find advanced networking. Here we can change the IPv6 status, which we would want to enable. And then we can also change the DHCP IP reservation. Here we can set a static IP for the Raspberry Pi. Once you find the Raspberry Pi, use the same IP that we used before. Once that's saved and confirmed, we can go ahead and do our port forwarding now. Make sure that the device you select has the same static IP that we just set. Here for the external port, type 51820 and make sure the internal port is the same. And then the protocol we're going to use is UDP. Once it's selected, go ahead and hit save and then we're done with the router settings. Before connecting to the VPN from our phone, we need to first connect back to the server and then we need to enable a new profile. To do that, type in pyvpn add and then this will create a new VPN client and then we can name this whatever we like and then to generate a QR code, type in pyvpn-qr. We can scan this using the phone app. In the client list, type 1 and then here you'll see a QR code pop up. On the phone, go ahead and install the WireGuard app. Once it's installed, click add a tunnel and then click create from QR code. Then go ahead and click access the camera and then scan the QR code on screen. Here you can name the tunnel whatever you'd like. Once it's saved, make sure you allow VPN configurations and then now your VPN will be connected. Once it's enabled, we can go ahead and check that it's working by opening a speed test app or googling our public IP. The public IP will be pointed to our local network instead of the data connection or public Wi-Fi that you're using. As you can see, it solves its Xfinity. The speed is entirely dependent on your home network speed. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment below.